Mozilla just released their new Firefox Quantum Browser. It's got a couple new features including built-in screenshots, a save for later feature named Pocket, and a library that holds all of your Pocket saves, bookmarks, browsing history, screenshots, and downloads in one spot. Data can be synced between all of your devices, and you can instantly share open tabs between them as well. If you decide to start using Firefox Quantum, you can move all of your data from any other browser. I've tested it out on our iMac and it's surprisingly clean and simple. It's extremely snappy when browsing the web and adding new tabs. Mozilla says it's twice as fast as Chrome while using 30% less memory. We decided to run some benchmarks and speed tests between Firefox Quantum, Chrome, and Safari. We also loaded each with a bunch of tabs and also ran a few videos at once to see how they'd perform. If you're on a Mac, chances are Safari's gonna be the best choice since it supports the rest of the Apple ecosystem. With added features like Handoff and Safari Autofill which automatically syncs with your iPhone. That feature was recently revolutionized with Face ID on the iPhone X. With instant autofill without having to tap any buttons at all. If you'd like to learn how that works, click the card above. I ran this test on an almost fully equipped 2017 5K iMac with 40GB of RAM total after adding in an extra 32GB. While running the benchmarks, I used iStat menus to monitor the process usage for each browser and noted the maximum usage at any given time. The usage is displayed in relative percent, so it won't be limited to a total of 100% like the CPU sensor shows. High usage isn't always a bad thing, since it could just mean that it's well optimized, but it can also lead to higher CPU temperatures and a louder fan. If CPU usage is through the roof, then you should expect a big boost in performance Otherwise, it's inefficient. We first ran Antutu's HTML5 benchmark. Firefox was a little bit behind the other browsers, but it used the least amount of processing power. Safari, for some reason, used a huge amount. Then we ran Jetstream 1.1. Firefox beat Chrome while using the same amount of processing power. Safari, on the other hand, destroyed both of them, but it was demanding. Next up is Octane 2.0. Firefox was right under Chrome, but used less power. Safari beat them both again, while using much more power. Then we ran Speedometer 2.0. Firefox actually beat both of the other browsers this time, while using much less power. Next up is RE6, and a lower score is now better. Chrome and Safari destroyed Firefox in this test, while using not that much more processing power. Finally, we have Motion Mark. Firefox gets completely mauled by the other browsers, and surprisingly, Safari actually uses the least amount of power this time. We averaged the maximum power usage for all the tests and found that Firefox used the least, while Safari used the most. We don't blame Safari though, since it outperformed the other two. We decided to run all the benchmarks at once on each browser. The maximum processor usage for Firefox was 540%, and the actual CPU usage sat around 60%. The scores averaged around 34% slower while running them all at once. Chrome, on the other hand, had a maximum process usage of 735%, with around 85% of actual CPU usage, and the fan noise definitely showed it. The benchmarks averaged around 55% slower while running in tandem. Safari also had a hefty 716% maximum process usage, with around 80% CPU usage, so the fan kicked up, just like on Chrome. However, the benchmark scores averaged around 37% slower, which is still pretty good. We were extremely impressed with Firefox, being able to run all the benchmarks at once and only kicking up the CPU to 60%. Now let's transition into some real-world tests. Our first test was to time how long it takes to open and load 9 of the most popular websites. We got our stopwatch ready and ran through each set of sites 3 times for accuracy. Chrome destroyed the other browsers, with Firefox lagging behind. Safari was right in the middle. Then we decided to see how each browser would handle 20 different Apple Insider articles open in tabs at the same time. Firefox used the least amount of RAM, and we also found that Firefox only used one extra process for every five open tabs, while Safari and Chrome had an extra process for each tab. All browsers were snappy when switching between tabs, but Chrome was pretty slow to close tabs compared to Firefox. Safari, on the other hand, was able to close tabs as fast as we could click. We found that Chrome actually crashed and froze during this test. That isn't surprising, since I've experienced a lot of crashed tabs using Chrome. 
For our final test, we decided to run five YouTube videos at the same time. Firefox again used the least amount of RAM for this test. Chrome stayed at around 60 to 70% CPU usage while playing back five videos, and it was choppy when switching back and forth between them. The CPU also got very hot and the fan was going at full blast. While using Firefox, CPU usage was at a shockingly low 10%. Playback was very smooth and the fan didn't kick up. Safari did even better, with CPU usage ranging from 5 to 10%. Playback and switching between videos was also very smooth. After running all these tests, we are extremely impressed with Firefox Quantum. While it may not be the fastest web browser, it definitely used the least amount of processing power in RAM. Safari can be quite power hungry, but it's extremely quick. And we can definitely say that Chrome is the least reliable browser. There hasn't been much time to really test how well Firefox Quantum works for day-to-day -day use, but it's definitely off to a good start. It's also very clean and simple, just like Safari. In the end, it all boils down to which browser offers you the features you love to use most. If you enjoyed this video, like it and hit that subscribe button. Also, check out our price guide, which makes it extremely easy to find the best deals on Apple products updated daily. Be sure to follow us on social media, and we'll see you in the next video.